Hello friends, let us start our chapter Minerals and Energy Resources. So now in the last, let us come to the the non-conventional sources of energy one by one. By picture, I think it is clear. The first we are taking. Solar energy. Solar energy. In solar energy, we are getting energy from sun. It's from its heat. So before doing the other points of solar energy, let us do one thing. That there are two types of solar energy. We are getting energy from solar. First, by through these solar panels. Here are solar panels where we there are so many solar cells in it, which convert solar heat into solar. Electric energy, as we know that energy can transfer from one form to another form, from kinetic to potential, or from potential to kinetic energy. So here, the solar heat transform into electricity through these solar panels. There is another method also, as you can see here in these diagrams. In the concave manner, mirrors are there, and here is a pipe. So these all mirrors concentrate heat. On this pipe, this is how this pipe become too hot, and we send water from here. As you can see here, the whole plant near Los Angeles. That this is how we send water from here, and the water rotate like this, and then go to the plant. Its steam goes to the plant where this steam energy used to produce electricity. So this is how we see two types of electricity are produced through it. Being a tropical country, India has enough scope for the production and the utilization of the solar energy. Maximum part of India is hot region. At if you see at present, then about twenty. Megawatt per square kilometer per annum energy can be produced from solar energy in India. It can be produced in India, as we know that solar energy can be used for cooking, pumping. We can use it for pumping also, the steam and heating water. Many houses. People are using solar energy for their source of geyser in their home. Refrigerator and street lightings also in rural area it is very easy for us. We can use street light because we see the electricities are not there, and the third desert can become the biggest solar power house in India because it is the place where more than 98 percent time period of this area they get direct solar lights. That means there is no barriers of clouds here, and obviously it's a hot place also, and that is why. India's largest solar plant is located at Madhapur, Gujarat, in the West India. So there is a lot of potential to produce solar energy in Gujarat and Rajasthan in West India. Not only it has a clear skies for the considerable part of the year in Rajasthan and Gujarat, but abundant insulation is get by this region. And obviously, cheaper insulation. It is a cheaper insulation and easier management also. The main thing we can add here is the renewable and pollution-free source of energy. So let us come to the 
next one and this next one is the wind energy wind energy we are using as you can see here these are very huge fans and uh, here are the generator when the fan rotates it it rotate uh, the generator also as you can see here and this is how it generates the electricity this is the one method uh, we see the sugarcane juice radius on the footpath areas so here the method they are using is like they when they rotate so it rotate a circle of iron like this and another circle is connected with it like this so when it rotate it also it rotate like this so it also rotate it like this so this is the method which are using in this solar sorry wind energy not in the sea area but like on a land area when there is a solar plant so when a solar plant rotate so it rotate the pipe also which pipe is under the underground and uh, when it pipe rotate it pump out the water also so we are using wind energy for pumping out water also and for this purpose also it is used for many many purposes like pumping water means irrigation and also generate electricity in india we have 20000 megawatt potentiality to produce wind energy the 85% sites with a potential of 4500 megawatt have been identified in tamil nadu andhra pradesh karnataka gujarat kerala maharashtra and luck with in these all coastal regions the coastal region is important because they get continuous wind the land streams and the water streams and if it is asking about the largest wind plant in india then the largest wind farm in india which is a cluster of wind farm which produces 150 megawatt of electricity it is in Tamil Nadu now let us come to the biogas plant if we were asking about biogas plant then here we are using the energy plantation urban based farm based human based etc to generate electricity basically we are using the cow dungs for it as you can see here the plant is like this from here we put wet organic waste, the cow dung and other with water and they go inside these areas with the help of water become a slurry tap which produces gas I think the gas is known as methane gas known as the biogas especially it is used for producing for the cooking purposes and when the waste or the effluent is left with this effluent is used for the agriculture purposes and so this is how it is not only it is a recyclable but a, a recyclable and also a renewable source of energy here you can see a cow dung and a urine go to the bio disasters and the effluent goes for bio fertilizers and when it produces the fodder and this fodder is used by cow and then cow gives us cow dung so this is how the biogas is going on and the gas is produced by it is used for the cooking purposes so let's write down some points of it the energy is derived from shrubs, farm waste, animals and human waste it has a higher thermal efficiency in comparison to the kerosene, dung cake and charcoal energy produced can be used for as we already discussed in the 
for the cooking purposes especially and also for lighting and the residual can be used as a manure and as we know that more than 70% of India lies in rural area so here we easily get the these old things especially the cow dung and uh, maximum number of the of the maximum populations of the animals are or the cattle are in, in india so this is the best source of energy in india the others are geothermal so mel thermal energy as you can see here in, as we go downwards to the earth the temperature increases you can see here uh, that how much temperature is more than 9000 degree centigrade temperature under the if we go under 4000 miles actually the ratio of it is in the crust only in crust it is 34 to 35 meter if we go inside the temperature increase 1 degree centigrade in the crust the rate is like this so this is how we can use this heat also so as it is written here also the geothermal energy refers to the heat and electricity produced by using the heat from the interior of the earth means the in underground heat of the earth that we are using the i think you all see the hot springs in the world geothermal energy exists because earth grows progressively hotter with the increased depth increasing depth as you can see here in this diagram also and uh, here the geothermal gradient is very high and also we get a very high temperature here and this high temperature are found at shallow depth and we see in some areas of some areas where we get ground water in such areas heat ground water from the rocks are coming and they become hot as i gave example of the hot springs plus if we go to the hilly areas in himalayas also here also we see these types of things it is so hot that when it raises the earth surface, it turns into steam, and this steam is used to derive turbines and elect produce electricity. Means here, this we are using this streams, this steam energy. If we see in world, there are a lot of hot springs in India. Also, we have a lot of hot springs, uh, and these all steams, hot streams, we can use for producing electricity. In India, at present, we have only two geothermal plants, and the first one is located in the Parvati Valley near Manikaran in the Mandi district of Himachal Pradesh. The first plant is this one. This was established by the Britishers in India, and later, now we also established recently a new plant in the Punga Valley of the Ladakh. Or we can understand it through this diagram also. You can see this diagram that we send the cold water here and see how this pipe is connected with the hot water. Um, here the temperature is high and this is how it produced hot water or we can see steam and this steam directly goes to the plant and this is how we are using geothermal energy. Now let us come to the next one and that is the tidal energy we come to the tidal energy as we know that high tide and low tide continuously comes in twice high tide and twice low tide so this energy of high tide low tide we are using for producing electricity here you can see that when high tide comes here is our turbine it rotates the turbine and the water goes here now it, because of this the water raised up and when low tide comes the water station goes towards this side and we used this also helps in this plant because the water goes from opposite direction now now also it, it rotates the fan and this is how we get from the high tide and the low tide means the tide coming in at that time also and when the tide going outside at that time also or this map also i can help you this is how fan is here the water goes in the tunnel, the fan or the generator is here, or you can see the turbine is here, and this is how when water goes from this direction to this direction, it rotates the fans. Not only this, in the beach areas, we also put these types of fans 
and when this fan rotates according to the currents of the C and this also helps to produce the electricity. When most plants are like this, when waves comes, high tides come, it compresses the air here in this chamber and when it compresses the air, this air goes or this compressed air pushes this piston and this is how the electricity is produced. This is how we see India is very lucky that it has more than 7,000 516.6 km long coastline including Andaman, Nicobar and Lakshadweep so we are very lucky for it and maximum part of it comes in torrid zone there we see too high when high tide comes the level of high tide is too much high so India is very lucky for it though we are not producing too much Tidal energy, but India has a lot of potentiality to produce tidal energy also. So this is how we see India has a lot of source to produce energy from these non perpetual sources of energy. And this is how we complete our 10th class chapter. Minerals and energy resources. I hope the chap concept of the chapter is clear. Even then, if you face any kind of problem, you can send your comment to me. We, the Adam Networking team is ready to clear your each and every doubt or you can visit to our to my blog also which is bipindogra.blogspot.in thank you students